Hello everyone and welcome back. We have a fun one for you today. This is a resorption case where it appears to be just on the inside of the tooth, internal only. Looking at the PA there, you can kind of see on number nine where it's located. And at the comb beam, I wasn't able to find a point where it actually in came through the side of the tooth or anything like that. I know it looks like that on that one image there, but it was rock solid here. So I decided to do a non-surgical approach and just treat this tooth from the inside out. Now it's close enough to the nerve. We're gonna be doing the root canal. So that's what we're starting off with here. Um, EG3 and then drop it in with our normal work course bore. One thing we're going to do differently here is I'm going to start off with an F1 here. That's kind of the natural size of this tooth anyway, so it's easier just to go with that. One thing you will notice here is that there is a lot of bleeding. Um, I kind of struggle with that the entire time um, until we get the calcium hydroxide in, and that's because resorptive tissue is highly, highly vascularized. So you're going to definitely see a lot more bleeding whenever you deal with resorptive cases like this. Going in here with my working length, skipped over that because you guys have seen it before, and just look at how much blood that is. That was just from getting working length. That wasn't anything else. There was that much bleeding coming through there, and that's because that's just what resorptive tissue does. So um, I did a lot more rinsing than I would normally here. I cut that out so you didn't have to see it. A lot of work with the activator as well. You want to try to get into those little nooks and crannies, um, drying everything out. And then what we're going to do here is after we dry, you can kind of see I'm able to get it mostly dry. There's still a little bit of bleeding at the very bottom, not too much though. And what we want to do is use calcium hydroxide here. And the calcium hydroxide is because it's so basic, it actually helps kind of cot chemically cauterize the resorptive tissue. One thing you can do to make it work a little bit better and look at the bleeding coming out right there is use the endo activator to help kind of push it in to those little nooks and crannies and then seal it up. I like to use Cavit here, just Cavit, and it almost works as like a plunger and pushes it in there. So you can see how we got the calcium hydroxide into that lateral portion of the resorption. So um, after a month, she comes back feeling great. So we're gonna go ahead and finish the case up for her now. Rinse out like we would normally, go back in, recapitulate with a 20K file, long, long tooth here. I think 25.5 was the length on this bad boy. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish it up. Um, once again, I skipped a lot of this over because you've seen it, but a lot of extra rinsing here. Just want to make sure we get these things as clean as possible. This is a case where a laser or a gentle wave would definitely be useful to try to make sure we remove as much tissue as humanly possible. Um, even with a laser and gentle wave, I would still two-step this just because I want to use that calcium hydroxide to help stop the resorptive tissue and make sure that if it is external, um, sometimes you can actually get formation of protective layers with the, the how basic it is. So um, I'm going to use a score technique here because I'm not really concerned. There's not like it's a large you know, infection on the bottom. Same thing you see me do a hundred times. Go back in with our nitide condenser and kind of get down inside there. Now, the hole as far as the access was pretty small. I was able to keep this nice and tiny, so you will get to see you know a little bit more work here, kind of getting this down. Um, but you'll notice I'm kind of going in waves, going back and forth, and I skipped over a few of those as well. The reason why is because you want to make sure we get get a perch into all the little nooks and crannies. And if there is any resorption down there, you want to seal it up. So I'm going to do a post in this tooth. Um, she does want to get a crown on here eventually. We're going to probably keep her like this for about six months. Um, financially, she was struggling a little bit. So we're going to, I'll show you how I kind of helped make her aesthetically a little bit better as well at the end. But I'm going to plan for that this tooth will need a crown. So I'm going to place a little fiber post inside that just helps support it and prevent a snap off. And what time is it? It's head strim time. <laughs> so um, it's stuck inside there. Ended up having to use a head strim to pull out the extra gutta perch but at this point after I've, I've fast forwarded through about a minute and a half of me kind of messing around with that we're ready to put that post inside there so we're going to use the Brassler fiber post, um, the ones that we use for everything. Now, after taking the x-ray, I could not get this thing out because it was stuck in there. So here's a trick that I've learned. If you can't get it out or if there's not enough kind of stuck inside, uh, you know, sticking up, you can take hemostats and kind of lock them in here. And what that'll do is provide a lot of extra force and it's a way to pull out posts that might be stuck. One thing to do here is also cut the uh, color off the end of it because it's such a long tooth that we want to make sure that it's sealed all the way down to the bottom. At this point, we're sealing it up just like you've seen me do 100 times before use the etch kind of clean everything up um, I'm gonna do a total etch technique on this one as well and then when we're bonding it um same thing here, just try to do a little bit extra, especially into that area where the resorption was located. You wanna to try to fill that as best as possible. Now, um, is the final as great as it could be? I don't know, it, it's it's always tough kind of weighing how much tooth structure to remove, because I could have drilled a huge hole and kind of drilled all the way down this tooth, but I think it, it probably would have broken at that point. So what we're gonna do here is try to keep things nice and conservative. 
and you'll see the x-ray here in a few minutes after we're done. Um, fill it up just like we would for everything else, polish it off, and then I did act add in a little extra stuff here because you'll see aesthetically it's not the prettiest teeth um, she's got multiple colors on there she's kind of got a you know, different layers so one of the first things we do is flatten off those incisal edges just so we get those symmetrical there's done a lot of studies on um, you know aesthetically what people look at and eight and nine need to be pretty much uh, you know symmetrical so you can see not really pretty not very shiny um obviously i'm not going to fix the color but i can at least fix the shine and get these teeth looking a little more symmetrical and a little more to her facial profile these squared off teeth with those edges they tend to not work as well um with more feminine profiles so i like to round those off a little bit more you'll see that in a second but what we're going to start off is using this flame burr to just recontour those lining angles. Um, I like to start actually at the most apical portion, kind of at the CEJ, and get my line angles correct. Uh, there was a composite on there that was going into the gum tissue, hence why you saw immediate bleeding as soon as I got in there. And you'll see that composite on the mesial of number eight is also going to be a problem as well. But one of the first things you want to do if you're kind of trying to do aesthetic work here is establish those line angles because that's what catches the eye and you want to make them symmetrical. Even though I only worked on the one tooth, I'm gonna do both to make sure that we're symmetrical here. Next, we're gonna go in with one of my very favorite birds of all time, the little mosquito. And I like this for exactly what you're seeing here. For those incisal embrasures, to get them as symmetrical as possible, this little guy does a great job. And what you'll see as I'm going through these is just how much better these teeth look as you round off those edges. When you have really sharp right angles, it really shows how short these teeth are. <clears throat> If you can then go in and round them off like I'm doing, you'll see, especially on, I'm really happy with how number eight looks at this point. I'm gonna go back in and do a little bit more work here um, and kind of show you just, this is the my way of getting these teeth to look a little bit better. Like I said, round them off. It's subtle work, but it's one of my favorite things to do. These are cases that take pretty much no time at all. For a single canal like this, it's, it's pretty straightforward to finish it up. So I highly recommend keeping a set of polishing burrs. Um, just, you know, you can make a huge difference in people's lives. So going in now with a polishing disc and important to have your assistant put a little water in there as well it kind of forms a slurry paste that helps with the polishing process now what i like to do is come in this is more of a coarse one and as you start to polish you'll notice things so for example here number eight still has that defect where that composite was located so I'm gonna go back in and try to even that out. Now, obviously this is not the, you know, these teeth are never gonna be absolutely beautiful because there's four different colors, if not more, inside them to begin with, but you can create a difference in her life and I'll show you exactly at the end what they look like. Um, you wanna to try to create some evenness there because what we're looking for is the light to glint off those line angles to be symmetrical and also to be nice and shiny. And so that's what we're looking for here. And the more even that can be, the better that light Light is going to look. Um, so you can already see the difference here on number nine compared to number eight. And now as we start to polish number eight, you'll see how that line angle is starting to be established. The composite's still not polishing up perfectly, um, but it's getting better. You can start to see the shine that's coming in there. And then we'll do a little bit of more work here just to get those angles. One thing you can do is kind of brush it along the line angle. You can see that's what I'm doing. And thankfully with the microscope, the light's so bright, you can really clearly see where those line angles are. Um, but it should be almost a straight line coming along there. If you look at your dental anatomy books from way back when, those the, the line angles are really what gives us the size and sense of the tooth, and you can play around with them quite a lot. And then finally, we're going to use that BioClear Rockstar Polisher. Um, this thing is absolutely amazing. It works so stinking. Look, you can see the shine just as we're going through there. I love this thing. Um, it's just a diamond impregnated little cup, but it really does a nice job polishing these up. And they they you know, they're re-sterilizable and they tend to last quite a long time. I think, you know, we really don't have to replace them that much. It's not like I'm doing a lot of aesthetic work, but well, they do last a really long time and creates a really nice final product here. So I'm um, kind of showing you there as we're getting in there. It, that's what I'm explaining is the line angles. To, we're training a new assistant here. So um, you, you'll, you'll be seeing some more stuff from Miriam in a little bit, but that's kind of as we're going along, just getting that polish in there and wanting to make sure that we get that as nice as possible. And then we'll show you kind of what the final looks like here 
in just a minute. So, you know, from her standpoint, she wasn't planning on being able to get crowns on these teeth for a while, so at least we're able to give her something that looks a lot better aesthetically. So as you zoom in, you can see the difference here. I mean, obviously the one is from the camera, so it's a little bit better. The other is just a still image, but I'm really pleased with how these turned out. And then here's what the x-ray looks like. You know, I wish we were able to get a little bit more composite into that actual resorptive defect. We're going to keep her on a really tight recall here because that that's how this tooth is going to fail. It's, it's going to fail because the resorption comes back. But at this point, we're going to leave it. Um, we'll see her back in about three to six months, see if the resorption has grown in size. And if it has, at that point, we'll probably just refund her money and kind of say, all right, let's go ahead and do an implant. But I think it was worth trying to save this tooth. Um, if it looks like it's been nice and stable after the three to six months, let's do crowns on top of here and give her a beautiful smile. So as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we got a couple fun ones coming up in the docket. So excited for it. As always, like and subscribe so you don't miss any of those videos. And please leave comments. Um, I, I respond to all of them. And if you have any questions or anything you'd like to see in the future, please just drop a comment below. Thanks so much.